Aloha mai kako. Good afternoon and welcome to the East West Center Arts Program's Spotlight Series. Today's Spotlight. Aloha mai kako. Good afternoon and welcome to the East West Center Arts Program's Spotlight Series. Today's Spotlight will feature South Asian artists with roots in India and Pakistan. Right now, it's about 5.30 a.m. on Monday morning on that side of the globe. Um, so I'd like to give a special shout out to anyone who uh, set their alarms early to join us, um, especially this early at dawn. Agar aap Bharat ya Pakistan se humari saath is karikram dek rahe ho, to subah itni jaldi utne ke liye aur humari saath shamil honne ke liye bahut bahut shukriya. Um, my name is Marina George, and I'm an arts assistant, a student assistant for the East West Center's arts program. Um, I'm also a graduate student in the art history department at UH Manoa. Um, the rest of the East West Center arts team, all present today, includes curator Annie Reynolds, program coordinator Eric Chang, and arts assistant Navahini Lanzalotti. This program series was created in conjunction with our current exhibition, Beyond the Surface. The three artists that we will encounter today are Asma Hashmi, Sadaf Naeem, and Muhammad Yasin, who are each from a different generation of South Asian artists who found themselves in Hawaii at a very formative point in their artistic careers. Our first speaker, Asma, joins us today from Oxford in the UK. Asma Mahmoud works as an artist and art educator and has created a niche for herself in the world of printmaking. Asma received an undergraduate degree from the National College of Arts, Pakistan in 1986 and was awarded the East West Center Graduate Degree Fellowship to study fine art at the University of Hawaii from 1988 to 1992. She formerly held the post of Associate Professor at the Indus Valley Art School in Karachi. Um, Hashmi has exhibited her work in group and solo shows internationally and has curated print portfolios and exhibitions in the UK, Pakistan, and the USA. Asma. Okay, I'm just trying to figure it out. Uh, all right. um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to say hello and not uh, good morning. It is one o'clock in, in er, you know, middle of the night here. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking Marina for doing all this hard work with, at least with me. There are strange sounds coming in from my side. Um, also, Annie. Um, and Eric and all the East West Center uh, uh, for hosting this and hosting us. Uh, can I share the screen now? Starts from this. All right. Um, so I'm going to begin uh, showing you uh, my reflections of my stay in uh, Hawaii. And I begin by showing the work that I did in Pakistan before I came here. Now, here um, it's an etching and it's um, uh, of a, a woman uh, who's looking upwards and it isn't a recognizable face. Uh, however, there is, uh, you can tell that there is hope and there is um, 
and that she is young and has no clue about what the future holds. And I think this is where I began my journey when I came to Hawaii. And anybody right now watching who is um, has been to East West Center knows this room very well. And this is where um, I spent four years of my life and it does feel like a lifetime. It, now looking back nearly, well, now that I'm 60, it, nearly 60, it feels like a lot, you know, four years is nothing, but four years held, you know, is a lifetime for me. And there you are, Hale Kohini, where I spent the last two years. Um, and I, I certainly wanted to share with you that when I first came here, there were many things that we were unaware of. Um, that we have our own histories, we have divided borders, but we, the realization that we all are from one, one place and we all belong to the same space uh, came to me when I came to Hawaii and uh, all of us spent our days together and time together and found out different things about each other that were different yet the same. Um, East West Center, we had different things that we did. We cooked together. We did things that we never thought we'd be able to do. We cooked for, well, I don't know, maybe hundreds of people and made friends for life um, from all parts of the world. And here I, I want to say that uh, this is a friend of mine who, who very recently passed away. So this is a really special time that I had with her here for years. And here we are um, all dressed up, uh, probably going to a function arranged by Iswa Center um, you can't tell who is from Pakistan and who is from India, but we are all, you know, the, all looking the same, dressed the same. And here is another evening, probably going, going to a concert or something. And here we are in Alamon Center on the stage, dancing away uh, through the Iswa Center. And um, you can't tell where we are from, whether our borders were the same or different. Um, you can tell that I loved dancing. And uh, here I am uh, with a puppet that I made uh, at the University of um, Hawaii. And this was part of a seminar project. And I won't go into the details of what it was, but here was me holding a self puppet, dressed in very traditional clothes and dancing to a very traditional music. And here I can't not show you the beauty of Hawaii and how much uh, ha hard work it was, but then we had just as much fun. And this is in Alamo, and this is um, Waikiki. I cannot not show you Waikiki. When I think of Hawaii, I think of the beaches. And this is at the university, very near to where Sadaf is right now. Her room is around the corner somewhere over here where mine used to be. And this is Benji Bennington. Um, at my graduate, at my um, degree show. And uh, you won't see the artwork here, but you'll see the, the pleasure I had with, with Benji and um, 
how supportive she was towards me, my work, for everything. And here she is with two of her nieces and Meg White. The people that we've met have really made a difference in our lives. Uh, she went beyond the call of duty. She, when my mom came here, uh, she took her around, showed her her way. And here she's standing next to my work. And my mother would come from Pakistan to see my show. The people that I've met here with my work on top. And um, here I'd like to say that my work, my thesis was about um, architecture as a metaphor for gender relations. And within that, I'd done printmaking as well as sculpture. So these bits over here that you see are parts of uh, of a made um, in bronze in lost wax casting. So they are about 20 pieces of bronze on top of that. And he, this exhibition was done in at the Eastwood Center, um, completely taken control of by um, Benji Wellington, the force of nature. She arranged it, she hung it, she did all the lettering and um, an incredible job she did in, in a space that wasn't really meant as a exhibition gallery and she turned it into one and so successfully. Parts of the work. And a really um, bad photograph of all the graduates, the MFA students at that time, all graduated and standing under the sculpture at the art department. Uh, here, in the, before this, I'd like to say that I was the first student from Pakistan who was given a scholarship at the art department for art. Uh, before that, uh, they hadn't. And I think after me, quite a few people have come. So doors did open. Uh, once I was back in Pakistan, um, I started work with, with a new uh, vision. And here, the, the first thing I did was I started teaching it where I'd done my undergraduate. So that was something that was a privilege. Uh, I taught there for two years. I lived uh, with uh, my mentor, my teacher, my absolute, uh, you know, I lived with Salima Hashmi uh, for two years. And that was, that gave me the, yeah, I learned so much from her in those two years that I went there. Um, so with, with this one, I did this exhibition where I did, I made about 10 plates and I worked uh, on them collectively, uh, using them um, together with multiple printing. And I made about a hundred prints out of which 30 were exhibited and had a price tag on them. Each one of these roses has a price tag on them and these were for sale, but the ones that were left were given away for free. So this, and this piece was called um, War, War Child. So, and they're all roses and they're, uh, it's a, uh, statement or for how commercial um, has come into love and how peace is um, a war and peace. Uh, they, they say that peace, uh, war is for peace and the commercial aspect of it is, is not talked about. So, and this uh, 
was an installation that I did in Karachi, um, which was again about how we live in these bubbles and how and how it, within those bubbles we have a very safe and secure, or we feel that we have a very safe and secure life, and we um, we can ignore what is happening outside. Uh, our, so you could walk between the, this and have your shadows included in the work. And this is what I feel like is the wallpaper of series that I've done where so again drawings of um, a paper, paper that's been crumpled and then reshaped uh, this is uh, the blanket series which is a blanket is for comfort but here it is the discomfort of, of uh, living how, how do you live in a place which is comfortable and then look outside and see all the chaos that is around you so this is um, my statement on that here again is the bubble and of, of living in Karachi at a time when there was turmoil, there was bomb threats, they were, you know, but here, here I am in that space, safe space with opaque um, bubble around me. Well, here the work opens up with, um, I did the drawing on the wall and included it into the work. So the outside does come in. Um, I use uh, patchwork a lot. I do this for meditation. And this, uh, the ribbon embroidery, the ribbon uh, friendship quilt, uh, I've used this quite a lot in my work. And this is what binds uh, spaces together for me. This is what holds things down. Um, when I went to, when we moved to England, I again started uh, deconstructing my work, the work that I'd already done. I, I cut this into strips and rearranged it. And whatever was made with these lines rearranged into something else. And this is how I was looking at life. How, how are we going to rearrange it and weave it into something else? So I started making prints and then tearing them up. And here is a piece that I did again with the friendship quilt where I have drawn the prints and reassembled them into the ribbons that you see here. And they're held together by golden thread. Okay. And this is part of an exhibition. Um, I did a, a portfolio over here, an exchange portfolio, which was called Community. And it had uh, 10 artists from Hawaii and, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> from Oxford, I'm still living in Hawaii. So 10, 10 Oxford artists, 10 Pakistani artists who were still living in Pakistan, and seven artists, including me, who were uh, back from Pakistan but living all over the world. Um, and I'd like to read a little bit of this for you. Uh, so this was called Community. Community is made both complex and elusive by many aspects of current life and culture. Internet platforms connect yet segregate us. Migration invites exchange yet alienation. One's place among others is increasingly removed from physical location. Urban density increases both proximity and anonymity. Community print exchange proposes to simplify community what is our obvious commonality? How immediately and tangibly can it be felt? So this was, this was an exchange that I 
wanted our community to be recognized as as valid artists. We, I wanted to show the artists here, uh, and and they were very impressed by our art and artists here. So we had an exhibition at the Oxford University. It was it was very well received. And here are all the boxes. And here is the exhibition. This exhibition was at my studio. The other exhibition was there. So for me, I'm going to skip ahead to the next. So here, um, for me, process is very important. So it's, it's for me, art is like living. So in living, uh, the process becomes important. How do we uh, build things? How do we make things? And that is as important to me as, as the work itself. And here I, I, I put together something to show you that process where I folded paper, wet paper, and then used ink to stain it and then reopened it and crumpled it to make the terrains of memory of the, the life that you live and all that it has to give the good and the bad. And so it'll just be So the, the threads run through all of my work uh, in different ways. And I won't go into great detail of what this work was about, just to show that this work here is from 2010 and this one here is 2018. So there is still that link going ahead. Um, this is um, an exhibition at the studio, which was called Bridges. And my um, part in it were with these threads that linked everybody's work together. It, it flowed through all the works right on top. Um, and I'd like to end uh, with the thought that because of this COVID, we've had to be um, isolated or, or sitting at home. But however, it's opened up a world for us. And I have uh, joined together with five South Asian women artists, and we formed a collective called Collectively Kind. And uh, here we have decided that we will speak now because we realize that from both sides of the corners, of both sides, uh, we have wounds that we carry of partition, which our parents, we have inherited from our parents, which we never talk about. And we have decided that we will talk about it and we will talk about what we carry within us through that. And um, so there it is, uh, where I am right now. So I'm going to stop sharing. Have I stopped sharing? there. I can't hear you, Marina. Thank you so much, Asma. Can you hear me now? Um, thank you so much for sharing your work and especially your process-oriented images. Um, those are really enlightening. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm going to move um, to a second speaker now, but um, if you do have questions for Asma or, or any other speakers today, um, please put them down in the chat or on um, Facebook in the comments. 
Um, and we will have a discussion section at the very end. Um, and I'll pull up a couple of questions to ask, ask them then. Um, moving to our second speaker. Um, our second speaker today is a Pakistani um, artist. Um, her name is Sadaf Naeem. And she is a multimedia artist who works in painting, sculpture, and installation. Sadaf received her Bachelor in Fine Arts from the National College of Arts in Lahore, Pakistan. And she's currently a currently pursuing a graduate degree from the University of Hawaii at Manawa. She was named one of 20 Pakistani women artists you should know by Taqir Mujahir in, um, in 2019, Muhajir, excuse me, Taqir Muhajir in 2019. The same year, he, she was included in the Karachi Biennale and produced an installation at the Alliance Francaise in Pakistan. Um, she has received the Award of Merit in the Memory of Ethel Portner in 2020 for the group show Fiber Hawaii at the Gallery Iolani in Hawaii, USA. Um, her work has been exhibited internationally in Korea, Dubai, London, India, Sri Lanka, and also, of course, in Hawaii. So that. Thank you, uh, Marina. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so first of all, I just want to say thank you to East West Center Arts Dean for inviting me on Spotlight program uh, to share my work and my thought process. Um, so I've shortlisted a uh, few works from different series. Uh, and it is from early 2019 till date because I wanted to share transition in my work, um, what I was doing in Pakistan and how it is evolving here in Hawaii. So I would like to share my screen. Okay, so can you guys uh, see my screen? Okay, yeah. So um, before jumping into slides, I just wanted to share my thought process, how I conceive my work. Uh, my work is a reflection of my experiences to be in a woman's body, how uh, I am experiencing the world as women. Uh, and I'm interested in how uh, women interact with different kind of spaces, whether it's emotional or uh, physical. Uh, and I always take inspiration from my surrounding. Um, so uh, this is my one uh, first piece. It's called, it's from one of my shows, Surrounded. Uh, here you can see a pattern, uh, which is a foliage. And it's a combination of internal and external kind of pattern which is a very common feature in South Asian home home, uh, homes uh, or interior home decors. <clears throat> so um, I'm also interested uh, how I can, uh, how these two spaces can interact with each other, whether it's internal or external and uh, after, uh, you know, interaction, how they become uh, to another entity. And yeah, so I have actually um, included my titles and my ear uh, of uh, making this work, every work, and all the mediums and sizes. So this is a diptych, and I did it in 2019, early 2019, before uh, I came here. Uh, one of uh, my, another concern is uh, material or materiality. Uh, I believe material carry uh, value and agency and so i apply them in the process of uh, fabrication then whether it is acrylic paints or oil paints i challenge uh, the materiality like you can see uh, different layers of uh, pattern or uh, you know it's with different kind of techniques 
uh, I scratch the surfaces and sometimes I add and then subtract. So it is kind of a, you know, ongoing process by, while creating my artwork. And again, uh, it is kind of a whale. So, uh, which is another feature uh, of South Asian home style, you know, and you can see a lot of patterned clothing or uh, whales or curtains in South Asian homes. Okay, this is another uh, piece. Here uh, you can also see, uh, this is kind of small diptych and you can see uh, again, a pattern uh, and a layer and with behind the layer, there's a silhouette of women, which is kind of a blur. So I feel um, as women, you know, we always, as a South Asian woman, especially, I think we deal with a lot of whales uh, in our culture. Okay. So this is one of my installation, which I did in Karachi uh, Biennial. Um, and so here, uh, my concern was, again, um, it is, it was about the women bag baggages, you know, which women carry the femininity and all the baggage while shifting from one place to another place because um, they have kids uh, sometimes and dealing with all the, you know, you can see the, this is a detail uh, of that one pillow and you can see some abortion images. This is called displa displacement and, you know, uh, it is from when, uh, in Pakistan, uh, I've seen a lot of refugees, uh, refugee camps, you know, and um, they're how uh, women and kids, you know, they go from one place to another place. So my work, uh, this work was inspired from uh, that kind of displacement. Okay, so yes. This work is from 2020, and um, I have uh, an interesting story about this work. So it, I did it when uh, the first time lockdown happened uh, in early 2020, and everything was shut down, and we were just locked down in our buildings. And it was all of a sudden, and I had no idea what is going to happen. Um, and I, I think, locked down myself in my building, in my room for a month. Uh, or so and I just had no uh, art material so this series is one of my uh, from one of my art projects um, I use nail colors uh, to make this uh, artwork and I just tried to uh, make the gradation uh, how things change with the passage of time you know you can see you know different colors are penetrating with you know each other and how they are reacting with the surface. Okay. Um, this is also from 2020. And uh, while in lockdown, you know, uh, I was just, I also attended some paper making workshops uh, in my art department. So then i was into this uh, all paper kind of work and i thought why not i should use paper as not as a surface but as a medium or as a material you know and i should draw uh, paper with paper on paper kind of thing and uh, you know while uh, living in lockdown i just made these small uh, breast shape kind of pieces uh, uh, out of paper cast uh, from uh, they're like wine glasses and uh, kind of vessels. So I made these pieces out of that. And later on, I joined them together and made this uh, in a bigger uh, vessel or kind of an envelope, which holds, uh, you know, a lot of femininity or female uh, stuff 
And you can see I incorporated uh, some synthetic here in this. This is also uh, an ex extension of the previous work. And here I uh, made some paper cast out of uh, different bodies. And they were like floating in the air. And I have another view of uh, the same work. So I think uh, this um, past two years were like kind of challenging for me as well because of this pandemic uh, happened and we were restricted to some kind of uh, area. Uh, and uh, but I also feel that it opened up different kind of um, new doors and new openings uh, while, you know, how I created my work or how I experimented my work. Oh. Yeah. Yes. And then this is also uh, from 2020, uh, you know, during this lockdown thing, I was just, you know, um, documenting uh, all of my activities and I uh, used started collecting my hair on daily basis you know when I was combing my hair so I thought why not I should do something and for me I think uh, uh, relevant to this pandemic thing this uh, fabric or uh, handkerchief and hair I feel that they both have uh, abject kind of feeling you know, because when they're uh, when we use handkerchief, uh, then it change, you know, its entity. And same with the hair, when they are detached from our body, uh, they just change their entity and they just don't look nice. So I thought that I, uh, why not I should share, uh, combine them together and see uh, how they react with each other. So. Yeah, and then this work is from uh, 2021, early 2021. I had a show in my department, and this is also in the connection of the same uh, work where I uh, use handkerchief and my hair. Um, there's another uh, interesting story I just want to share uh, with you guys, uh, because when this lockdown happened, uh, I live in Hale Manoa in East West Center building. And um, so there were like a lot of students were uh, went back. They, a lot of students went back. And while they were leaving the space, so they were also leaving some of their things or some of their stuff, you know. And I found these handkerchiefs and I thought that this is a kind of really interesting thing because uh, we were all were like very concerned about hygiene and then you know looking back the handkerchiefs uh it triggers me you know my interest and i thought um uh, i should use uh these handkerchiefs in my work okay so this is also from the same um uh, exhibition uh called domestic folds uh, here i actually painted the handkerchief and uh Again, I was actually, uh, I couldn't travel uh, because of this pandemic back my home and I was kind of stuck here. So I think these are all kind of a reflection of time and uh, material or my surroundings. This is again uh, from the same series and here I just uh, so my hair uh, in star shape kind of thing uh, with a lot of uh, other stitches. This is again, the same thing. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I can, uh, because I always take inspiration from my surrounding as well. So um, while living in East West Center building, uh, I have experienced uh, a lot of different cultures and I interacted with different kind of people uh, from different region. So I think uh, 
but as women i strongly uh, feel that there are like a lot of similar connections and similarities so yeah this is again i was just experimenting with the shape the 3d thing i saw my hair and tied them in the handkerchief okay so yeah this is another um, work which i did in 2020 and this work is um, one of my concern while creating this work was how uh, you know female or as women uh, we feel pressure society pressure or how society actually fabricate uh, what we are uh, so you know about all these artificial fake uh, beauty standards and uh, body structures and body shaming so it i have all uh, these concerns uh, while creating this work and uh, another thing uh, was that the process of i weaved uh, this neck piece uh, with cotton and metal threads um, with knots so i think knots are also for me a kind of obstacles and also a connection you know but maybe it's not a healthy connection or when you are stuck somewhere so i think this uh, process is also kind of a concept for me you know when i create this type of work this is also uh, in the connection of the previous work. I uh, weaved this piece on my own arm. And again, my concern was pretty much same, uh, you know, how uh, society or our surrounding challenge our physicality, you know, as women. Okay, this is my last uh, slide and here also uh you know you can see different kind of threads and i uh did a lot of knotting uh, into this chicken wire thing so while uh, creating this work my concern was also you know how bodily experiences shaped by interactive social structures and domestic spaces so overall in my current work there is an investigation of material and also an exploration of my emotional space yeah. i'll just stop share thank you and yes i also would uh, like to share uh, that i'm sitting in front of uh, asma's work and uh, there's another a very interesting connection with Amna, asma that I am using the same studio at UH Art Department, which she uh, was using when she was here. So it is kind of a very interesting connection between us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Sada, for that incredible presentation. And um, we are constantly in awe um, how small the world here is in Hawaii and how many generations sort of overlap um, and how each how we feed into each other's work in many ways. Um, uh, and also something that needs to be um, sort of just just something that amazes me is is the ability of people over the last year um, to sort of stay in isolation for survival in a space that is necessarily communal like Hale Manoa or Hale Kohine, a space that was built for people to interact. Um, it has been so difficult to sort of enforce pandemic restrictions within such spaces and um, the kind of isolation that, that that leads to is also something that a lot of the students at the East West Center have been going through um, over the past year. Um, so thank you so much again, Sadaf. Um, Please um, direct all your questions to her in the chat and we'll come back to it um, later. Um, our final artist, before we go to him, I just want to let you know that we might actually um, exceed our time. Um, 
So I just want to let you know that we're supposed to go on um, until three, um, but the next two um, portions of this, this presentation will be films, um, videos. Um, one is a 15 minute excerpt, um, and the second is a musical tribute. So please, if you can't stick around, please do, but otherwise it will be on Facebook and you can catch it later. Um, thanks to the joys of technology now. Um, so our third artist um, is the late Mohammed Yassin, who was a versatile painter, calligrapher, and printmaker who taught lithography in the Department of Graphics at the Jamia Millia Islamia University in New Delhi. Yassin was born in 1928 in pre-independence India in Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh. He excelled at art from a very young age and won the gold plaque at the fifth Indian National Art Exhibition in 1959 and was then a recipient of the prestigious Lalit Kala Academy Award. Yasin Sahab passed away last August at the age of 92 in New Delhi, just as we at the East West Center were planning to include his works in our current exhibition, Beyond the Surface. We are especially fortunate today to hear about Yasin's journey in his own words, thanks to the documentary work of filmmaker Asim Asha Usman, who is here with us today, um, who was Yasin's friend and biographer. We are very grateful that Mr. Usman and his team, which includes Mushtaq Ali, Muhammad Shakir, and Tarun Yadav, have kindly edited an excerpt from the documentary for us to watch today. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Nava will now screen. Thank you. Through the congested spaces of New Delhi, near the Jamuna River, a well-known, versatile and serene artist lives in a small house where he finds little space to paint and to display the precious creations of his lifetime. Meet 84-year-old veteran artist Mohammad Yasin, whose character impresses as a human being and his characteristics as an artist. So when I was five years old, I was in the kitchen. फिर चाय अपने क्लास में लेके अपनी कुर्सी पे आके बैठ जाता हूँ और चाय रस के साथ पी लेता हूँ Perhaps the distinction is unreal, for in his case. It is the same integrity that reveals itself in the structure of his life and in the self-expression through his art. These are the words said by a noted art critique for Yasin many years ago. Yasin was born in Mughal Gidda, a village near Shadnagar, 30 kilometers away from Hyderabad. As a young boy, he felt a passion for art. After passing his elementary and intermediate drawing examinations, he moved to Hyderabad with his family.
मैं मुगल विद्या विलेज आंध्र प्रदेश में 4 जनवरी 1928 को पैदा हुआ बचपन से ही मुझे आर्ट का शौक था ड्राइंग मेरी अच्छी थी स्कूल और ड्राइंग टीचर के कोशिश से मैं आर्ट में आया उस जमाने में आर्ट कॉलेजेस नहीं थे प्री इंडिपेंडेंस डे की बात हुई 1941 में एलिमेंट्री ग्रेड ड्राइंग एग्जामिनेशन पास किया और 42 में एलिमेंट्री ग्रेड ड्राइंग एग्जामिनेशन इंटरमीडिएट ग्रेड ड्राइंग एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ बॉम्बे पास किया फिर इसके बाद मैं मुगल विजय से हैदराबाद शिफ्ट हुआ Though quiet in his demeanor, Yasin has had tragic experiences in his life. He had to grow up with many hardships. While as a boy, he was affected by tuberculosis of the spine which left him with a limp. But through a constant musing, he has won an inner serenity for himself. His deep-rooted faith in Allah made his life's challenges an enriching experience for him during his stay at the tb hospital he was advised to take complete bed rest but in between he began making illustrations of famous people of those days luckily his sketches were published in a magazine called illustrated weekly of india which used to come out from bombay that was one of his earlier inspirations which pushed him to make his career in art ये महात्मा गांधी की तस्वीर ये स्टालिन जो रूस के डिक्टेटर कहलाते थे स्टालिन जोसेफ स्टालिन मैंने उनकी तस्वीर बनाई हॉस्पिटल में ही मिले थे फिर इसके बाद ये लेनिन थे ये कम्युनिस्ट लीडर्स थे मैं इनकी तस्वीर भी बनाया तहमीना बाई दगे who was the member of the women welfare committee at the tb hospital encouraged him to pursue art as a full time career and helped him secure scholarships from various organizations of hyderabad 54 mein mai college of art mein hyderabad mein sharik ho gaya aap yakeen maniye mai 4 saal ka diploma aur 1 saal ka advanced diploma मैं ये चार साल भी क्लास में फर्स्ट आया और मेरी स्कॉलरशिप लिया कंटिन्यूसली यासीन वाज इंस्पायर्ड बाय अब्दुल रहमान चुगताई अ लीडिंग आर्टिस्ट इन द वॉश टेक्निक हिज टैलेंट टुक हिम टू द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हवाई होनोलुलु एंड प्राट ग्राफिक सेंटर इन न्यूयॉर्क बिटवीन 1962 टू 64 इवन एज ही इमर्ज्ड एज अ गुड कैलीग्राफिस्ट Yasin widely traveled to museums, art galleries and art centers around the world where he learned extensively about the various art forms. Besides traveling, he also exhibited his unique artwork in many countries of the world. Mere ek kalam parma the sympathizer the wo Sardar Singh Museum mein technical advisor the Mr. Anil Rai Chaudhary. तो उन्होंने कहा देखो यासिन मुझे बहुत खुशी है मैं इस जगह काम करता हूँ ये घर है मेरा आप जब चाहे मेरे पास आ सकते हैं तो मैं इस ख्याल से नहीं कि ये मुझे कुछ देंगे इस ख्याल से कि ये मेरे हमदर्द हैं तो मैं अक्सर उनसे मिला करता था पंद्रह बीस दिन के बाद मैं गया उनके पास तो वो बोले देखो मैं मद्रास गया था आर्किटेक्चरल सेमिनार में वहाँ ईश्वर संत होनोलुल के चांस लोग आए हुए थे मैंने उनसे आपके तालों से डिस्कस किया तो वो कहने लगे कि देर इज ए पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ स्कॉलरशिप वाई डोंट यू आस्क हिम टू अप्लाई मैंने यही यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एजुकेशन फाउंडेशन इन इंडिया टूल हेवी रोड पे 
उनकी निगरानी में मैं अप्लाई किया तो उन्होंने कहा कि देखो हमने 20 स्टूडेंट चाहिए इस सेंटर को हमने 38 स्टूडेंट भेजे हैं नाम आपको डायरेक्ट वहाँ से मिलेगा सिलेक्शन की सूरत में तो मुझे मिला सिलेक्शन और मैं हवाई चला गया सितंबर 62 में हवाई में डिफरेंट मीडियम्स और टेक्निक्स जो यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हवाई बनोलू में आर्ट डिपार्टमेंट में मैं ऐसे स्टूडेंट काम किया क्योंकि तो हवाई जो है लैंडस्केप के लिए बहुत मौजूद जगह है अफसर आप सब ग्रीन ही ग्रीन है तो मैंने वो लैंडस्केप्स बनाए वहाँ पर ज़्यादा था फर्स्ट आई वेंट इन नाइन सिक्सटी टू सिक्सटी फोर आई वॉज एज ए स्टूडेंट एंड स्कॉलरशिप आई वेंट एंड सेकेंड टाइम एटी सिक्स आई वेंट दे एज अन फेलोशिप आर्टिस्ट इन रेसिडेंस फेलोशिप इन्वाइटेड बट दी आर्टिस्ट विस्पे सेंटर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ कल्चर एंड कम्युनिकेशन डॉक्टर मैरी बिटरमैन ही इन्वाइटेड मी आपकी एग्जीबिशन कहाँ कहाँ हुई उसके बारे में आप हमें बता रहे थे मोनोलू में हैदराबाद में उसके बाद दिल्ली में दिल्ली में से कई एग्जीबिशन किया मैं मैसूर मद्रास यरका बेलगाइस पुर्चुगाल न्यूयॉर्क आई पैक्स में तो नाइनटीन सिक्सटी से मैं करते आ रहा हूँ डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद तो ही गेव मे द अवार्ड ऑफ द ललित कला अकेडमी ही इनाग्रेट एग्जीबिशन ऑफ नेशनल आर्ट एग्जीबिशन ऑफ ललित कला अकेडमी आई वर्क दे प्रोवाइड आर्ट द मटीरियल आर्ट मटीरियल आई प्रोड्यूस पेंटिंग्स एंड दे एंजॉय रिड एंड आई एग्जीबिटेड आई डोनेटेड सेवरल वर्क बट आई डिट ट्राई टू सेल गेट इन फाइनेंशियल बेनिफिट आई विजिटेड पैरिस रोम वैटिकन सिटी एंड ईस्ट वेस्ट सेंटर ऑनरलू मुझे जो स्कॉलरशिप मिला था वो दो साल का था इसकी वजह से मुझे मेनलैंड अमेरिका घूमने की इजाज़त मिली मैं लॉस एंजलिस से शुरू किया लॉस एंजलिस कैंसस सिटी सेंट लुइस सिटी ग्रीन्सबरो वाशिंगटन डीसी, फिलाडेल्फिया न्यूयॉर्क बोस्टन शिकागो सियाटल सैन फ्रांसिस्को ये मेनलैंड अमेरिका में घूमा यहाँ गैलरीज देखी आर्ट इंस्टीट्यूशंस देखे और बाद से गिर तो स्टूडेंट्स के साथ गेट टुगेदर भी हुआ हमने अपने एक्सपीरियंस उन्हें सुनाया और उनकी बातें भी हमने सुनी यासीन वर्क्स विद वाटर कलर ऑयल एंड ग्राफिक्स द एडम एंड ईव और द मैन एंड वेमेन थीम that to him is symbolic of temporal creation and existence his symbolic work gives a complete feel of rhythmic sounds that this blue is used to color all the male faces and not the female ones speaks for the artist's traditional attitude towards the sexes He never worked for any name, fame and awards. Yasin as a person is gentle with pleasing manners and endears himself to one and all with whom he comes into contact. But his work stands in complete contrast to his personality. He uses vibrant colors that is evocative and based on his own observations and impressions of the environment. 
he is endowed with a higher sensibility and an acute sense of aesthetics. His work continues to inspire the younger generation to have more creative power and challenging attitude in their approach towards art. Big thank you again to Asim, uh, Asim Saab for um, allowing us to screen the film. Um, the final component of our presentation today um, is a musical tribute inspired by the works of Muhammad Yassin that was specially commissioned by the East West Center and composed by violinists Trina Basu and Arun Ramamurthy of the Brooklyn Raga Massive. Described by the New Yorker as a free-flowing, globe-spanning um, musical duo, the Brooklyn-based duo explores beauty found at the intersections of their musical parts, where their original compositions weave together the threads of South Indian classical, Western chamber music, jazz, and creative imp improvisation. Their divergent musical journeys have been central to their careers as innovative educators and creative performers. The duo's forthcoming album, Nakshatra, will be released later this year. Both are founding members of the, music, of the Musicians Collective Brooklyn Raga Massive and live in Prospect Heights with their two sons. I'd like to now invite Arun and Trina to say a few words about their composition and the process of its creation. Thank you, Marina, and yes, hi, everybody. You. It's so wonderful to be here tonight. And we want to thank, or for us, it's tonight. We're in Brooklyn. So it's 8 o'clock or 9 mm -hmm. o'clock now. Um, we want to thank the East West Center and Annie and Marina and everybody involved um, for inviting us to be part of this evening. It's really an honor to take part in such an event um, and be amongst some, some great visual artists. We loved all the work that we saw and especially an honor to make a piece um, in tribute to Mohammed Yassin, whose work really inspired us um, when we were shared his work by Annie and Marina a couple months ago. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, um, Yassin Ji's work was, um, we, we, we saw a lot of, um, he was using mandalas, circular, uh, figures, which was something that musically we were trying to think about how can we relate or how can we find ways to express what he was trying to express. And um, we saw a couple, couples in many of his works and um, it made sense to us also about voices and that there's unifying voices or maybe sometimes it's not unified, maybe there's two voices um, that are trying to say something and they're slightly different. Um, so we thought about those ideas. We thought about circles. We thought about um, the roundness. Uh, he he used a lot of shapes um, within circles. There were triangles, squares around it, inside of it. Um, all these things were elements that we thought about when creating this piece mm -hmm. um, and trying to figure out how we could express this musically. Um, it was a wonderful experience, mm -hmm. honestly, for us to do this and, um, you know, um, we hope you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so we can go ahead and check it out. And if anyone has any questions after, feel free to ask.
and that was Aruna Trina's composition to Yas and Sal. Um, thank you so much um, to the both of you. This was such a meditative piece, especially juxtaposed against the images that we were looking at. Um, the close-ups were quite incredible. Um, for anyone whose video was lagging, we will put another copy of this onto social media and you'll be able to see it again and listen to it again there. Um, Trina and Arun, could I ask you to say a little more about the piece now that we've heard about it? Well, we, now that we've sure. heard it. Sure. Yeah, we, we wanted to mention earlier too that one thing that really inspired us were his images of the integration of the Islamic calligraphy and Hindu symbolism. Um, I think there might be some, hearing some music in the background. Does anybody else hear that? <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, that was that was very inspiring. I loved we loved how he kind of configured the imagery into one, and it became a unif unified um, image, and it was very beautiful. Um, his his bold colors and his different shapes and the way that he kind of created these pieces um, was also very inspiring to how we created the melodies and some of the harmonies that you heard um, and some of the rhythmic cyclical kind of ostinatos that we're repeating throughout the middle section. Um, and uh, right. and his, yeah. you know, his use of, um, you know, the, the Allah and Om, you know, when he would use those, it, the idea was, you know, there was something very unifying about that to us that felt... Um, very spiritual, very meaningful, very um, central to humanity. And, you know, so we, we were thinking of a melody or something that could work. And it was that thing that we put in unison, which was just using, you know, in musical terms, the one, the four and the five. And, and it, it, that is something that is a very common, I guess, musical um, interval. form, interval. Yeah. And, uh, but there's something very universal about that which is something that we felt would be uh, something apt for what maybe he was thinking. And in the circular, um, you know, like the circles and the mandalas and, and those like, you know, we were thinking about this, uh, something in six, something that just like, rolled. And, um, and, you know, we were hearing that and we were really going for that vibe and um, trying to find ways to like, you know, we, were, we looked often at his work while we were yeah. composing and um and you know that melody was very much about uh you know something you know because i think he he thought of things differently but even though he was very traditional and very simple um i think he made a lot of statements with his simplicity and i think that's something we were trying to capture yeah it was super fun <laughs> it was. to do. <laughs> we enjoyed, house. yeah, we enjoyed learning about him too, as an artist and as a person in the film. It was very insightful. That was super interesting. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, we're lucky to have the filmmaker with us today. Um, yes. And um, so it's, it's, it's been quite something to bring everybody here together for this one event. Um, if you can see um, the mandala um, painting of Yasin's is actually behind Sadaf as well um, in, in her image in the gallery. Um, so it's actually ah, yes. on this display in the East West Center exhibition at the moment, which yeah. nobody can see in person, but maybe one day soon. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we hope to be post pandemic uh, sometime in the near future. Um, as we're drawing to the end of this event, are there any questions, anybody? Would, we're, I'm gonna open the floor um, for questions for the next five minutes. Um, if there's anybody with um, questions, comments, um, please rise to the occasion now. Okay, just to get us started, um, I'm actually going to ask, um, Asma to tell us a little more about um, her project um, on pa partition narratives. Um, and Sadaf also spoke um, very eloquently about um, South Asian women and this feeling of um, oppression, of, of being unheard, of being unseen, um, the idea of wailing um, that a lot of women have, have, have felt some resonance with. 
um, and um, ASMA's project, which looks at um, recording partition narratives or recording um, the stories of women who've, who've been impacted by partition. Um, I'd like to hear from both of y'all about um, just, just the way in which your art is going to um, look at those stories. So should I go first? <clears throat> Sorry, it is a bit late here. So, <clears throat> so um, uh, yes, it. Um, so when we got together, it was because we saw each other's work online, and it just clicked, and we started talking, and we um, figured that coming from the other side of the water, we had very similar experiences and especially the experience of no one talking about it. So uh, I, I've heard stories um, from my grandparents and my parents, but not um, in any great detail. Even if I was interested, there was nobody really talked about it. And, um, Surprisingly, the other side, my, uh, the artists that I'm, I've met also said the same. And um, so we started thinking about the trauma associated with, with such a tragic happening and that how that trauma sort of transcends generations, how it's passed on. So, we carry things with us that were brought to Pakistan from the, the partition because hardly anything was carried with them, but whatever they were wearing or whatever they could wear. So, they, and the value that peace has for us, uh, the generation that has heard about it. However, I my question is always, what about the next generation? We haven't spoken about it at all to them. How will they perceive this? Uh, what will happen to these treasures that I hold so, you know, that, that are so precious to me? Because I know the trauma that has passed through it, how will it be kept by the generations that come after us? And uh, and what are the stories that are behind all this? And why were they not spoken about? What were these traumas? And with the 75th uh, anniversary, like there is nobody is going to be left to tell those stories firsthand. So then it is on us who have heard it firsthand to be able to record it. So uh, that is the collective that we have. And hopefully uh, we are planning to exhibit twen in 2022. Uh, Maybe we can have you in Honolulu as well. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> that would be an excuse to come. <laughs> um, Sadaf. Yeah, um, I would also like to share my thoughts about it. Uh, I, I think being a, a South Asian woman uh, growing up in that kind of uh, culture, um, there are like a lot of similarities uh, between, you know, this the whole region, whether it's in Nepal, it's Nepal or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka. And I think I uh, have experienced these uh, connections more strongly when I came here. Uh, you know, um, I just want to share um, that uh, yesterday uh, there were like few girls from my floor and uh, they all applied henna on their hands and it was like so beautiful and all the patrons, I mean, everybody was doing it. Um, there were like some, um, some girls were like from here as well and, you know, from different regions and um, all the patterns and uh, you know designs were like quite similar, uh, and so I think uh, as women we share uh, kind of similar aesthetics, whether we are 
from any part of the world, I guess. So there is a very common uh, factor uh, about femininity or, you know, about this womanhood. And also uh, talking about the veil, you know, I think it's not about the religious thing or it's not about religion. It's quite a cultural thing in South Asian um, households. Um, whether it's in India or in Pakistan or in Bangladesh, you know, because uh, I think it's part of the culture uh, that as, I mean, society or our surrounding want, doesn't want to see us, you know, in front of uh, the scene or, you know, there's um, still, uh, you can say, male dominant, dominancy there. So I think uh whale is also kind of uh part of that thing yeah thank you <laughs> i don't know thank you for sharing um we do have a question from rick tremelios um for the musicians rick would you like to ask it in person oh yeah <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, a wonderful piece of music. Uh, I was uh, wondering, because I was a classmate of, of uh, Yassin's way back in the day, and he painted these wonderful elephant paintings, as well as the mandala ones, which a lot of the kids really liked. I was just wondering if, when you were going through his artwork and looking at things, if you also had any inspiration or anything from the, those paintings of the elephants, which we found very playful. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And, you know, they did incorporate, honestly, when we were thinking about the circles, um, there was also the elephants that we, we saw. And like, there's something about the gait of an elephant, the walking, the, the movement of an elephant. And um, so like, there's something about the the standard or the movement, you know, there was like da 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 So as we're moving, we were kind of feeling a little bit of the, I, you know, I had seen some of those paintings and we were, as we were playing around with parts, um, looking at the different paintings, and this one spoke to me actually quite a bit about like how, you know, an elephant might move. And that was like a family of elephants too. And there's something fun about that painting because there's a lot of colors in that too, right? Like it is a, a colorful, vibrant painting. So, yeah. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I'm an ethnomusicologist. I have to, if to uh, sort of uh, uh, tell you that. So I was very taken with your, uh, with your um, uh, emphasis upon the first, fourth, and fifth scales which of course are very important for Indian ragas as well. I mean, there were a whole mess of things that sort of came to me as I was listening to that music. And so thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Rick. Oh, I appreciate it. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and that brings us to the end, uh, unfortunately, of today's event. Um, thank you so much for joining us from wherever on the globe you're joining us from. Um, we're so grateful to have you all here. Um, the video of this event will continue to be on Facebook in case you want to go back to it. Um, Brooklyn Raga Massive is going to have um, a new album coming out, Nakshatra, be on the lookout for that. And we will see you at our next Spotlight event or hopefully in person in the near future. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Mahalo.